The healthcare market inquiry has painted a bleak picture of South Africa's private health sector. Now, rising costs, overutilization of private health services, and monopolization by three groups make private healthcare unaffordable for most. To talk some more about the outcome of this inquiry, we have uh, in the studio uh, in Durban, health law consultant Shafruddin Ahmed to unpack what the report found. Thanks for um, coming through as always, uh, just to help us understand some of especially the, the legalese contained in this inquiry. The main finding, however, being, being that South Africans are paying more for private health care than ever before without there being any proof of an improvement in the product or the services being rendered. Um, what was your big takeaway from the findings of this inquiry? I think the findings were expected, Marcel. Um, good afternoon to you and, and, and the viewers. Um, South Africans have definitely been paying much more than they should. Um, I think the findings um, just articulate who the, the culprits are, looking at the um, medical schemes, uh, looking at the service providers, and as you said, some of the big hospital groups as well. And uh, not forgetting the uh, lack of function of the regulators as well. Um, and, and that is why, possibly one of the reasons why um, the costs of healthcare has been spiraling out of control, is that the regulators have not stepped in to ensure that um, all the specific uh, um, uh, um, s uh, service providers are, 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 are taken to, to, to task about this. Um, to take us back to um, the work being d that was done by this uh, five-member panel, they started their work back in January 2014. Uh, so it's a report that's five years in the making. I suppose the fact that their work was delayed by the fact that it was very difficult for them to get information out of some of the medical aid schemes as well as the hospitals also points to there being an issue around a lack of transparency in the industry that they were f trying to do this report on. Yeah, yeah, the famous adage is uh, the more things change and the more they stay the same. And uh, for five years, that's, that's a long time to try and gather information. That should be available in the public domain. And we've seen that with other commission of inquiries. We've seen that with uh, medical schemes, we've seen that with hospitals. It's very difficult for them to collate the information. Secondly, it is also difficult for them to authenticate the information because what, what the uh, um, commission essentially uh, found was this uh, a term called creeping collusion. And, and uh, you know, whether they've been provided with all the information or not, uh, still remains to be seen. But the fundamental fact that we must take away from there is that South Africans are at a disadvantage at this moment in time with regards to uh, medical aid costs. Let's look at some of the recommendations that have been made um, by this final report of the Health Market Inquiry. One of the main ones being a recommendation that there be an establishment of an independent supply-side health regulator, and that's to oversee licensing, pricing, and the quality of care in the private health care sector. Do you think that'll work? Marcel, another regulator, you know, the, the issue is We've got the Council of Medical Schemes, which is a regulator, which is in a shambles at the moment. We've got the Health Professionals Council, which is also a regulator, mm -hmm. that has not uh, stuck to its mandate. And if both these uh, uh, regulators had stuck to their mandate and carried out their duty, as has been dictated to, perhaps South Africans would be in a less worse uh, scenario at this moment in time. I think asking for another regulator may be uh, a, a step too far until we have current regulators that are functioning to their full capacity and are holding the relevant authorities accountable. Mm. Right now, nobody's being held accountable. And the, the, the two main culprits that have been pointed out in this report are the medical schemes and, of course, specialists um, who seem to be um, charging patients way too much and, and, and uh, unaccountable in terms of how they, how they bill patients. Do you have any hope that both medical schemes and indeed also our big hospital groups will pay any attention to the recommendations made by this inquiry? Because um, uh, is this an inquiry uh, that has been given teeth to implement those findings and recommendations? It's, it's very difficult because the, the, the three groups are, 
are very huge. I mean, uh, individually, they account for tw more than 25% of the market share and collectively uh, about 80%. So what do they take away from this? And, and what space is there for independent groups to come in remains to be seen. But um, whether this inquiry uh, will be, uh, be able to be implemented to its full extent remains to be seen as well, because we often have commission of inquiries that amount to nothing. But for me, at least it's out there and, the, and that the public now know that they have a choice in, in, in their healthcare provider, in their hospital, in their medical aid. And, and one of the other fundamental issues was that patients or, or people do not understand their medical aid plan. They don't understand it. It's, mm. They're disempowered because you get 12 different plans and a patient does not understand what's covered and what's not covered. And, and that is a real issue for patients, especially um, with our socio, socioeconomic uh, concentration. Now, whose responsibility should that be? Um, if, if you look at uh, these uh, medical aid schemes that operate in a free market uh, 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 setup, is it their responsibility to ensure that their potential clients are completely aware and educated as to what they are sign signing and what they get in return? Firstly, whether we're operating in a free market society is highly debatable. Yeah, true. Number two, it is firstly, it is firstly the medical aid's responsibility. They send through rules and regulations to their patients. But you must remember, uh, Marcel, even the average person out there receiving a 120-page booklet uh, mm. with uh, a lot of jargon and a lot of uh, language that they don't understand, uh, the reasonable person cannot make sense of it. So it's only when they're admitted to hospital or visit their healthcare practitioner and they're asked for a co-payment that they realize, oh my gosh, my plan does not cover this, or I've got a co-payment. So it is fundamentally the job of the medical aid to ensure that patients know what they're paying for. It's like any other commodity that you're purchasing. If you're purchasing a service plan for your motor vehicle, you know exactly what is, what's, what, what is being covered and what's not being covered. Why should not, that not happen for a, a patient? Absolutely. I was about to make that uh, connection as well. It's like when you go to a mechanic, you'd rather take somebody with you that actually knows what goes on in the inside of a car. Otherwise, you can be taken to the cleaners. One la last question before I let you go, Shafruddin. Um, uh, obviously, a lot of talk then about NHI and the team that's busy trying to put the first phase of its implementation together. If you were on that team and you were given this uh, uh, health market inquiry final report, what would you hope to glean from it in terms of how it could help the implementation of the NHI? Two words, affordability and accessibility. Mm. Um, and the NHI in its current state is economically flawed. It's possibly constitutionally flawed. Mm. Um, it's just the same old song, you know, with a different message. They need to go back into that war room, as they call it, and re-look at the NHI for the future because it's, we need patients to understand how they will access their, their care and where they will access it. And the final thing is, Marcel, is the clinical outcome must be positive. Nobody's been talking about the quality of care. It's fine that you visit a, a doctor or a hospital, but nobody's measuring the quality of care and the final product that the patient comes back and is uh, either better or worse off. So that is called a, clinic, a, a positive clinical outcome. So with the private hospitals as well, that, is been, that has been an issue. The clinical outcome has not been measured. So NHI needs to look at funding and affordability and the clinical outcomes for patients. Okay, let's leave it there. Thank you so much. Health Law Consultant Shafruddin Amut. thank you so much for that perspective.